His Royal Highness the Deputy King and Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Decree 94 of 2023, restructuring the Board of Directors of the Labour Fund based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates the following. The Board of Directors of the Labour Fund shall be restructured under the chairmanship of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the membership of Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, Nurband Ali Al Khalif, Walid Ibrahim Kanu, Baza Muhammad Al Sayi, Muhammad Farouk Al Mawayad, Dr Yusuf Yaqub Al Maas, Yaqub Yusuf Muhammad, Hassan Abdullah Al Halwachi. The term of the membership of the Council shall be four years. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the first Bahraini Psychiatry Conference in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr Jalila Hassan. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, the CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr Ahmed Mohammed Al Ansari, and a number of health sector officials. Sheikh Dr Mohammed bin Abdullah affirmed that the health sector in Bahrain is witnessing increasing progress thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and the close follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He explained that organising this conference embodies Bahrain's distinguished status in hosting major medical events and conferences and exchanging experiences. Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz praised the support given to the health sector to raise the level of its efficiency and the quality of its services to the community. For his part, the CEO of Government Hospitals expressed thanks and appreciation to the SEH chairman for patronising the conference, indicating that Government Hospitals will continue their efforts to consolidate the progress of the health sector. I've looked at the, uh, the programme. It looks excellent. We have uh, quite a rich uh, uh, academic feast uh, expected wherein there will be lectures about lifestyle psychiatry, there will be lectures about pharmacogenetics, there will be lectures about artificial intelligence. I think it is uh, conferences like these that put uh, mental health in the public domain. It just uh, increases the profile and I was particularly uh, impressed with the endorsement uh, by His Excellency's presence here in this conference or the inauguration of this conference, I congratulate uh, the organizing committee, the scientific committee for uh, arranging and organizing this event. As you're aware, uh, there is stigma around mental health all across the world. The stigma has been traditionally associated uh, because of the non-response of uh, treatments um, uh, of mental health, despite the significant burden it places on the society. Uh, but now there are, uh, you know, effective evidence-based treatments available uh, and we should highlight those, we should normalize talking about mental health so that the stigma decreases and the access becomes better. And actually it is conferences like this that do that, uh, they normalize talking about mental health, they bring it to the public stage, they bring it to the public domain and the conference topics uh, is a very excellent selection of topics by the organizing and scientific committee. The conference is a very important one because we exchange uh, information and expertise between different professionals, whether it's psychiatrists, uh, generalists, uh, sp speech and language therapists, uh, physiotherapists and psychologists. And it's, it's a, a good opportunity to look at the update in uh, the medical field uh, and other uh, disciplines as well. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The Chief of Public Security and Interior Ministry Undersecretary attended. Sheikh Khalid presented uh, during the meeting as uh, some of the affiliates of the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, who are involved in the Alternative Sanctions Project and the Open Prisons Programme. The Minister received the Director General and the affiliates out of the noble principles and values of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah asserted that this reform project of His Majesty the King's represents the core of the reform concept of the Alternative Sanctions Project and the Open Prisons Programme. 
he hailed the ongoing support of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He appreciated the professionalism and high performance of the affiliates, highlighting that the graduation of the first batch of the Open Prison Programme was a success story that makes the alternative sanctions project a reformation and rehabilitation model in human rights and community service. He hailed the role of the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative S Sentencing and the organised work approach. He said that the partnerships with the government and private sectors and civic organisations in implementing the Alternative Sanctions Project reflect social cohesion and solidarity. The achievement makes human rights in Bahrain a re tight reality. He noted the importance of continuing efforts to develop the Open Prisons Programme. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing thanked the Interior Minister for the nice gesture, healing the success in the development of systems and programmes because of the support provided to the Alternative Sanctions Project and Open Prisons Programme by the Interior Minister. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the extraordinary session of the Arab League Council at the level of foreign ministers to discuss the dangerous escalation in the Gaza Strip as a result of military confrontations between Hamas and Israeli forces. The meeting was chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccans Abroad, Nasser Sarita, in the presence of the senior officials and the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abu Ghaid. The Council accepted a resolution emphasising the immediate de-escalation of the Israeli war in the Gaza Strip, calling on all parties to exercise restraint, warning of the catastrophic humanitarian and security repercussions of the continuation and expansion of the escalation, and working with the international community to launch urgent and effective action to protect the security and stability of the region. The resolution stipulated the condemnation of the killing and targeting of civilians by both sides, and all acts contrary to international law and international humanitarian law, and stress the need to protect civilians in line with common humanitarian values and international law, and the need to release civilians and prisoners and detainees. The resolution also affirmed that the way to ensure security and stability in the region is to achieve a just, a lasting and comprehensive peace that fulfils the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, especially the right to embody their independent, sovereign state along the lines of the June the 4th, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital, to live in security and peace alongside Israel, in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative. A number of ministers praised the visit of His Royal Highness the Deputy King to Maharak, where His Royal Highness witnessed the launch of the plan to develop the city of Maharak and the activation of the plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. The plan comes in implementation of the Royal Order issued by His Majesty the King during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Council. The Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wala Mubarak, affirmed that the Ministry developed an integrated plan of action to increase the green area within the Maharak Development Plan in cooperation with the concerned parties. He also stressed that the Ministry will work to harness all its capabilities to implement the Royal Order and the Directors of His Royal Highness through urban development programmes. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, affirmed that His Royal Highness's directives serve as a roadmap for the work and achievement during the next stage. He noted that the Ministry will increase its efforts to implement these directives in a way that supports the goals of the comprehensive development process. For his part, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Humedan, affirmed the Ministry's keenness to coordinate with the various relevant government agencies in an integrated manner to implement the Royal Order and His Royal Highness's directives, especially with regard to developing infrastructure services and public facilities to achieve the desired goal of this promising national plan. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Arumehi, said the Ministry, upon receiving His Royal Highness's directive, activated the Executive Plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities and launched the plan to develop Maharak. The Minister of Information, Dr Ramzam al Nuemi, affirmed that the visit of His Royal Highness to Maharak reflects the interest that the Government attaches to implementing the directives of His Majesty the King and preserving the decades-long history of Maharak. 
He stressed that the Ministry, in coordination with the National Communication Centre, completed the preparation of a comprehensive media plan to shed light on the plan to develop in Maharak and preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. The President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, affirmed the continuation of working to embody the vision of His Majesty the King to develop Maharak in cooperation and coordination with all relevant official authorities and under the directors of His Royal Highness, with the aim of demonstrating the historical and cultural value of Maharak. The Dean of Arab Diplomatic Corps in London and Ambassador of Bahrain to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a reception for the Council of Arab Ambassadors for members of the Labour Party in Liverpool. The Ambassador welcomed the attendees, appraising the pivotal role that the United Kingdom takes in supporting and enhancing security and stability in the world and the close cooperation between Arab countries and the UK. He stressed the importance of condemning all forms of violence and focusing on avoiding escalation in the region calling on all parties to calm down, protect civilians and comply with the requirements of the international and humanitarian law. Shadow Minister for the Middle East and North Africa, a member of the British Parliament, Wayne David, praised the relationship between the UK and Arab countries and hailed the development in the Middle East region in several areas. The Minister of Exports for the UK and a member of the British Parliament, Afdal Khan, delivered a speech in which he explained his regret for the recent events in the Middle East, in which he urged the importance of peaceful coexistence between all religions and stressed the responsibility lies with all members of society to achieve peace in the world. The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Sheikh Dr. Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, stressed the importance of qualifying young national cadres at the beginning of their careers through leadership and training programmes that would refine their skills for current needs and future requirements. This came during the closing ceremony of the Youth Leadership Programme presented by the Institute of Public Administration for Babco Refining Company, a subsidiary of Babco Energies. Sheikh Dr. Rannan added that the Institute continues to offer leadership programmes and training services aimed at upgrading national cadres working in the private sector. She noted that the programme was designed by the Institute specifically for young national specialists at Babco Refining Company to obtain the best knowledge that enables them to participate in achieving the company's strategic objectives. For his part, the CEO of Babco Refining Company, Dr Abdurrahman Jawahari, said that the strategic partnership with the Institute in designing and implementing the programme comes in fulfilment of Babco Refining Company's ambition to create young national leaders. The Acting Under Secretary of the Ministry of Oil, Fehan Al Fahani, and Bahrain's Ambassador to Moscow, Ahmed Abdurrahman Al Saati, participated in the sixth session of the International Forum, Russia Energy Week, held in Moscow, Russia. The forum discussed the main challenges facing the energy sector, such as development problems and global energy development prospect programmes. The forum also discussed issues related to energy transition, climate protection, a digital transformation of the energy industry, training of cadres and the energy crisis in the world. The Judicial and Legal Studies Institute celebrated the graduation of the first and second batch of the training programme Professional Certificate in Judicial Experience. Within a series of training programmes in professional certificates, 109 trainees participated in the training programme, receiving training from a number of specialists and those with judicial and legal experience, with the aim of raising capabilities and competencies in the legal and judicial field in an effort to achieve continuous development in the judicial sector in Bahrain. The programme targeted experts practising the preparation of judicial expertise reports, including engineers, accountants, information technology experts and others who wish to practise judicial expertise in various specialisations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the official positions and statements of the Kingdom of Bahrain are those issued and expressed solely by official authorities of Bahrain and not any other party. <laughs>